Good afternoon, welcome to EduSet Network. Friend, as you know, we have organized series of lectures on philosophy and practices of education in India. We will talk about the different aspects of education, how the framework uh, is set for uh, delivering education in schools, colleges, and other institutions. And, and we will try to understand the entire uh, spectrum of education and uh, about uh, 10 lectures. And we'll start today with a new concept which has come into effect, uh, inclusive education. Uh, this was, uh, this, uh, this is a very important uh, concept of education which is giving a new direction to the entire gamut of education, like to include all the uh, neglected areas, neglected peoples who were not included before. So giving the focus on the inclusion a uh, new concept, inclusive education, has come into practice. We'll talk about in details another aspect also, right to education. Uh, in fact, the right to education is a new, um, uh, we can say, start a new era in the education. So, and we we'll, uh, discuss this uh, today uh, with Dr. Uh, Suhasri Sina. She is a senior lecturer in a State Council of Education and Training, SCRT and has also been associated with the SCAL committee, Learning Without Burden. So I hope her knowledge and experience will help us to understand education, uh, inclusive education particularly, in a new perspective. So on your behalf, I welcome Dr. Sinha for a recent lecture on this very topic. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Amandra. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today's uh, topic that is inclusive education. This is the most discussed topic today because in the context of India, which is a country of diverse needs and the country with diverse popularity, popula population that is caste, creed, and various type of people. And there is individual differences in their capacity, ability, learning styles and communication. But in spite of that, people are essentially similar and they should be perceived as equal. In the context of education, which is the major concern for the educationists and nation builders. So, in the advent of globalization, liberalization and economic reforms, there is constant felt need for restructuring of education and make it more flexible and pragmatic. To keep pace with the changing scenario, MHRD, which is Ministry of Human Resource Development, has initiated various schemes and projects at central level, which are being implemented at all levels and all states. One such important scheme of India initiated by MHRD after the Education for All Summit which uh, in 1990, which was held in New Delhi. The Sarva Shiksha Abhijan or SSA to provide education to all children, this scheme has come into action because in the education for all summit, it has been revealed that India's rank in the status of education in the status of enrollment, retention and total literacy percentage is very poor. So, to combat with it, MHRD has initiated the project that is the Sarva Shiksha Abhijan. 
this abhijan is to include all the citizens of india under this banner a school education is the main instrument for developing holistic and creative personalities it is the duty of the government and all of us to provide at least quality education up till the upper primary level that is 6 to 14 year age group of children because this is the in our con uh, constitution article 45 to provide free and compulsory education to all children of 6 to 14 year age group. <coughs> to fulfill this that is to provide free and compulsory education to all the children of 6 to 14 year age group, the universalization of elementary education or UEE has been initiated as a mission under the Sarva Shiksha Abhijan. The main focus of UEE mission was universal access, so that we can provide access to all the children, be it of any religion, any caste, any creed or any type of ability or disability. Then universal enrollment, when we can, if we can provide the universal access, that is access to school for all children and enroll the children of 6 to 14 year age group are being enrolled in the education system in the primary school and upper primary school as per their age. Then the third is universal retention, children are enrolled, but it has been seen that they are not retained in the school after 2 or 3 years they are the, the drop out. So, universal retention is necessary, so that all our children at least are being educated up till the elementary level. And then last, but the most important aspect is universal quality achievement. All the children are being retained in school and they get some quality achievement. So, they learn. As it was found that many children, especially children of low socioeconomic background, children of disadvantaged groups, girl children and the children with various disabilities, they are, they were either not enrolled or if they are enrolled, they are not retained in the mainstream of education and most of them are being dropped out or we can say they have been not included in the mainstream, they have been excluded from the school system due to various reasons. They could not cope up with the school environment, they could not cope up with the teaching process and there are various reasons. So, retention was not satisfactory. So, to cope up with this problem, we think there is requirement of inclusion of all children, how all children can be included in our education system and how they can learn at par with the other children, so that we can get educated and literate society. Previously, inclusive education was known as integrated education. In our all commissions and committee, there was recommendations for including and integrating children with disabilities in the mainstream. But now, inclusive education include all sorts of children, be disabled or maybe they are from disadvantaged group, they are from some other ethnic groups, 
they are of low socioeconomic background. So, th all the children should be included and how we can do that? This is the challenge of us, not a problem, because we have to take this challenge being that uh, educationist, being in the field of education, we have to take this challenge, how we can include all in the education system and provide them proper education, proper guidance, so that we can develop a good citizens in the near future. So, the inclusive education, the philosophy of inclusive education has come based on this philosophy. <coughs> we know that all of us, all the children have equal right to education no matter what their background or ability is. So, in April 2000, the World Education Forum held in Dhaka, Senegal set its goal that by 2015, all children have access to and complete free and compulsory primary education. So, we are on the way of achieving it. And with much effort, it has been seen that there is reduction in out of school children. Previously, if we see that in 2001-2, million children were out of school. But now, in uh, we have the data up till 2006-7. So, it is reducing in 2002-3, then 1.16, again 2004-5, uh, a slight increase that is 1.35, but in 2005 and 6, uh, there is again decrease that is 0 0.95 and in 2006-7, we see that only 0 0.7 percent are out of school children. So, this is a good sign that we are going to attain the 10 percent enrollment and retention of children, which is the main focus of universalization of elementary education. Now, if we can see, we uh, see this slide, we can find that who are the children, who are the children, we are who are not included, we are they are mainly excluded of the mainstream of education due to various reasons. So, this is the 6 to 13 year old out of school children by social category. Uh, there are disabled, the various types of disabled children with multiple disability, locomotor disability, speech, hearing disability, visual disability, mental and all types of disabled. So, they are mainly, their number is high, their percentage is high, who are excluded from the mainstream of the education. And there are other children also like Muslim background, OBC, Scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, the girl children, female, and some male and all children. So, these are the children who were mainly excluded. They are enrolled, but after 2 or 3 years, they are not retained in the mainstream due to various reasons. Maybe the school environment is not conducive for them. Maybe they do not do not get enough facility in the school. Some psychological problems are there, they cannot, they are not accustomed in the mainstream of the school. So, for this we have to think what to do and how we can do. Now, this is the figure of social exclusion of the children, the Muslim children 
schedule caste, schedule tribe, OBC and majority of out of school children are concentrated in 5 states. We see Bihar with 23.6 percent, Uttar Pradesh 22.2 percent, West Bengal 9 percent, Madhya Pradesh 8 percent, Rajasthan 5.9 percent. But this percentage is now reducing. There come now the Right to Education Act. The Right to Education Act is a boom to the education system. This act tells that all the children have the right to be educated and it is the liability of the government and it is the liability of all the citizens to provide free and compulsory education to all children at least up to 6 to 14 year age group. So, after the implementation of right to education act, inclusive education has come into action very well, because based on this act no school can deny admission to the children with disabilities, children with low socioeconomic background, children with different ethnicity, caste or grade. So, what is inclusion? <coughs> inclusion is, it is the two way process of increasing participation in learning and of identifying and reducing or removing the barriers that inhibit the learning and participation of all learners. Because there is sometimes we see that there is not participation of the children in the learning process. Maybe they cannot understand, maybe they uh, are not at par with how and how the teachers are teaching. There are so many barriers may be physical barriers and may be some mental barriers which inhibit the learning and participation of all the learners. So, inclusive education is about acknowledging the diversity. We have to go with the diversity because there is individual differences and no two children are alike. So, we have to acknowledge the diversity, we have to acknowledge the various abilities or disabilities and we have to respond to the needs of all learners in the classroom, in the education system. What is their need? So, separate need, the need there is individual needs. So, we have to think about their individual needs. Inclusive education challenges the barriers in the educational system and is a catalyst for school improvement. If we can lift the barriers, maybe the physical barriers, maybe the environmental barriers, maybe the mental barriers in the education system, which hinders the development of education. If we can remove the barriers, so, we can bring education boom. Then rational for inclusion, why inclusion? Education should be helping to change the world. It is not static because there should be change. We cannot say that we will remain static. So, change will be there. So, education is the education can help to make bring the change in the world to make it less oppressive, less unequal and should help to build greater equity and justice, greater and wider access to life. It will help all the children and 
how to face the life in future. What could be the approach of inclusive education? For inclusive education, this inclusive education system provides access to quality education for the poorest and most marginalized boys and girls. The most marginalized means whom we have kept aside as poor or low socioeconomic background or may be from other caste or creed. So, they are called the marginalized section. So, inclusive education will provide access to quality education for all the children may be they are of very low economic background, their social background is very poor, their economic background is very poor, they may be of some other religion, caste or creed, but in case of inclusive education everybody is equal. So, we will provide equal opportunity to each and every child. So, approach first approach will be quality. We will ensure education that is responsive and flexible to individual needs. If we do not respond to individual needs and if we as a teacher are not flexible, we if we do not change ourselves as per the need of the children, we cannot provide quality education. Various children have the they are as per their background, as per their parents background, they vary in learning style, they have different learning styles, they learned at different pace. So, we have to provide quality education keeping in mind their background, their learning style, their pace of learning and we should be flexible at part their need and we have to focus on individual needs and we have to be responsive. If we are not responsive, responsive, if we do not open us, then children will not come to us and they would not open themselves. Then comes equity. There should be provision of non-discrimination. In one classroom, the teacher should not discriminate between a very bright students, average students or very poor students. Maybe a child is poor in maths, but that child has very good ability in other areas. So, a teacher should not discriminate in between the bright average and poor learners, they should not discriminate in between the children of rich family or the children of poor and low socioeconomic background. They should not discriminate in between a boy or a girl, there should the teacher should be gender sensitive and equal opportunity should be provided to all children so that they can learn at their own pace. Then participation, it is very important. Participation is necessary because if there is no participation, then how the children we can learn properly. So, participation in all the activities of the school, participation in all the activities of the organization, participation in 
all the activities of the classroom may, may be the in the inside the classroom, outside the classroom and all curricular and co-curricular activities. So, that overall development being possible. For participation, we should facilitate the children and community participation should be there. We should include the community also to build effective education system, because without participation of community, we cannot build effective education system. Then building capacities, it is very essential, because when the teacher will teach in a classroom of various children of various background, it is a challenge to the teacher to teach all sorts of children. So, it is necessary for building capacity of the teacher, how he or she will uh, embrace all types of diversity in her classroom and help the children to learn in a better manner. For that, strengthening the personal and educational institutions, because when we are calling all the children of and including the disabled children. So, the educational institutions should be strengthened, there should be facility for all types of children and at both micro and macro levels, there should be facilities, there should be educational, educational as well as physical facilities in the institutions and the personnel like teachers, like school educators, educational administrators are to be provided regular training to strengthen their capacities, so that they can be a better teacher, better education provider. All of us know that change is a process and not an event. In one day, change cannot happen. In one day, India cannot be fully literate. In one day, <coughs> India cannot be fully gender sensitive. Slowly, but steadily change comes. So, change is a process and all of us should help in this process that this change comes in a positive manner. So, getting ready for change, we have to be ready for the change. Any kind of change, uh, at the beginning, we feel that why this change is coming. Some inhibition is there, because in the school, when all sorts of children, previously the children with disability used to go to the special schools, but now all types of children are being admitted in the general schools. So, teacher thinks why they are coming in the general school. So, there is some inhibition from the teachers, but slowly now we are accommodating all the children and teachers are also doing their jobs very nicely. Getting ready for change requires the team effort because it is not only the teacher who can do this. It is a team effort where all the members of the education system and not only that, it should be in the parents are should, should be involved, then teachers, children and administrators. So, all are to be involved to bring this change. The culture and context of the school influences the process of change. This process of change, how it is influenced? The culture and context of the school. How we, you will make your school, your culture, it will help or it will influence the process of change. So, inclusive planning is necessary to bring the inclusive education. Planning by all. When we are planning, the instructional dimension is one aspect, then organization of school is one aspect, 
and community involvement. It is very important. So, all three are intermingled in the inclusive planning. Not only instructional dimension will help in inclusive education, not only the organization of school. School may be very good building with all the facilities, with all types of organization, but not only if there is no community involvement, community participation, then we cannot reach to our goal. How inclusive planning? Because when this challenge has come to us that inclusive education is a must, because after uh, the implementation of right to education act, we have no other option, but we have to abide by that act. So, let us plan how we can plan the inclusive for inclusive education and this planning as it is inclusive education. So, planning I have already uh, told you that planning should be inclusive and which will include all the stakeholders of the education, maybe the parents, maybe the teachers, school administrators, principals and community. So, but we need it aims at whole school development. Let us take this motto that whole school development is necessary and for that we have to make a plan. Sitting all together we will make the plan for whole school development, so that all types of children are educated by this school. It focuses on working in collaboration with the entire school system. The entire school system are involved in this planning process and the change in entire school system is necessary. It firmly believes that change is possible only when teachers, parents, principals, education officials, children and the community have a shared vision of what the school should be and work together to achieve this vision. So, first of all we have to have a vision and this how to achieve that vision for that vision all of us should work together. All the stakeholders of the organization of the school should sit and plan and see that the plan is being implemented properly. It is about celebrating diversity. The diversity among children are to be celebrated. It is to be celebrated and not it is not a problem. It is a need because there is diverse needs of the children and we have to think of their diverse need and how much we can do for them, so that we can make good citizens. And changing the rigid school system in order to meet the needs of all children. The previous rigid school system that whatever you will be taught in the classroom, all the children should follow it. No, maybe there are 30 or 40 children in the classroom. So, 30 and 40 minds are there, their thinking is different, their learning pace is different, their interest is different. So, we have to think of individual child and we have to be flexible, not rigid as part the diversity of the children. <coughs> Now, it is a vision driven process. At the center, there is the organizational vision. Each and every school, each and every organization should have a vision, should have a goal and from the vision, the organizational goals come. So, what is the vision? What do we want our organization to look like over the next few years? So, plan make a perspective plan for at least 5 years. So, after 5 years how I 
would like to see my school or to see my organization. From there comes the organizational goals. How can we accomplish our organization's vision? How we can go? Where we will go? Then we can design the organizational action plan. What are the objectives, tasks at hand? What tasks we have to do? What are the responsibilities and the division of responsibilities and the necessary and timelines? Because if there is no target, no timeline, then we cannot achieve the goal in proper time. Necessary to accomplish our goals. At what time we will reach our goal? And then who will be the contributor? Then organizational mission, then organizational values and beliefs are to be taken into care and then make prepare the plan, make a team, organizational component focus team, what functions of our organization are necessary for effectiveness that is curriculum, leadership, facilities, professional development, etcetera and how we will do that. So, based on that we have to design our organizational action plan and before that we have to collect some baseline data about current practices and then based on that baseline data we have to prepare the organizational plan. Then the most important thing that is the implementation of school action plan how to implement what plan we have designed how to implement and periodic assessment of the current practice. How much target the target we have achieved what is left out and why what are the problems we could not achieve. So, we have to think of it if necessary we have to bring some changes in our plan and then so that we can achieve the final target. The principals together with the teachers and a handful of other frontline supporters are the keepers of a school and classrooms culture. Sometimes it is said that a school is based on principal with the teachers and some supporters like maybe the PTA members may be the community around. So, these are the pillars of the school which keep the schools or classrooms culture. The routine arrangements, activities and interactions will engage shape your culture's norms, customs and climate with all its strength and troubles. The trouble or the strength if we sit and talk together, then we can come, come, up, come up with various uh, plan, various uh, plans, various thinking, various thought that how to overcome the problems and how to overcome whatever has come to our. So, culture, the culture of a school or organization, it is may mostly based on the attitude and beliefs of the stakeholders, it is the teachers, the educational administrators, the students, the community, the persons who are associated with the school, with the managing committee, the community and the norms. Some norms are followed by each and every organization, what are the norms are followed and relationships relationships in between the teachers, in between teacher students, in between the educational administrators, principals and the teachers, in between the community surrounding the school. If we do not follow a good relationship, we do not maintain good relationship with the community around, then they do not help because we get ample um, help from the 
community around of the school. How we can create an inclusive environment? The very first thing is barrier free physical space and a variety of equipment. Then stress free social emotional atmosphere that emphasizes cooperation. The atmosphere should be barrier free, the atmosphere should be free from any social emotional atmosphere. The child should not be should not get afraid to come to school. He or she will like to come to school because he or she will feel the teacher loves me, principal loves me. So, it will be the pleasure of the child to come and attend the school. If there is any social or emotional barrier, if he or she does not want to come to school, then ultimately he or she will be dropped out or we would not say the dropped out, we should be it is the ex he or she has been expelled from the education system. Third is teaching strategies that promote collaboration between the instructor and the learners, how the teacher teaches in the classroom, the strategies, how interesting it is, how it is learner friendly, how the teaching strategy helps the children to construct its own knowledge, because now we follow the constructivism, the child will construct its own knowledge and the teacher will act as guide or facilitator and flexibility is essential. Maybe in the curriculum, be it in the textbook, be it in the process of teaching in one class, maybe the principal finds that there is all the children are making noise. Why you are making noise? I mean, children are engaged in activity. So, there is noise in the classroom. A classroom or a school does not mean that there will be pin drop silence. No. If the children are engaged in activity, maybe there will be noise. So, it, it is acceptable. So, there should be flexibility in the mind of the principal that a classroom or a school does not mean that there will be pin drop silence all the time. Instructional inclusions plan curriculum access, instructional strategies. What is the curriculum? So, curriculum nowadays is based on our national curriculum framework 2005 with plenty of flexibility. There is space of flexibility, one can change its curriculum, the states are open to make their own textbooks, but based on the curriculum framework and one should get access to the curriculum, understand the curriculum and how to follow that curriculum. Then the instructional strategies, there should be flexibility, how the teacher will plan the instructional strategy. Managing differentiation, because there is differentiation, we are talking about the diversity. So, how to manage the differentiation? For that, careful planning is required to ensure that all students in a diverse class attain the learning outcomes, because when there is teaching, our main purpose, main objective is that the children can learn and when there is in a diverse class, the children with multiple abilities and some are bright children, some are very poor children in learning. So, with diverse types of children, we have to think, we have to plan so that all the children attain the learning outcomes. Learning experiences, resources, assessment and teaching strategies need to be adapted 
to the particular needs, abilities, learning styles and interests of the mix of students a teacher encounters each year and each day we can see. Because each day it is a challenge to the teacher how to combat with the various needs of the children and various learning styles, abilities and needs in the classroom. So, the teacher a good teacher plans for that, so that he or she can meet the diverse needs in a mixed classroom. Students may need a variety of learning experiences, because every day if you go and the same type of teaching is going on, then children get bored. But if there is variety of learning experiences, then children will love to learn. So, and they will achieve the learning outcome, there will be learning outcomes and these experiences may differ from one student to the another. So, one student may like one teaching strategy, the other student may not like or all of the students may not keep pace with the same learning outcome, there will be diversity, but the teacher will think about it. So, he or she can change its teaching strategies. Then managing differentiation, how differentiating instruction provides a particular challenge for teachers. It frequently means that several things are going on in the classroom simultaneously. Planning specific and detailed procedures for managing movement is as essential in an active classroom as it is in a busy airport. Every time it is changing, so you have to keep pace with the change, changing interest, changing uh, students learning outcome, so you have to be with them. Effective teachers plan, teach and periodically review procedures for the movement of students from one activity or grouping to another. They establish concrete and clearly understood guidelines for student interaction and noise management. Procedures to ensure that all students are active participants working on tasks and accountability are a crucial part of the teacher's planning and instruction. So, the teacher should plan in and then teach without planning if she comes to the classroom it is it is a crime for the teacher and he or she should periodically review what and how I am teaching, whether the students are taking it in a good stride, whether the children are enjoying it or not and whether the children are active and actively doing all the group work. So, these things and at the same time the teacher has to manage her classroom, his or her classroom and maintains the discipline also. It is better to involve the parents, especially in a diverse classroom and especially when uh, in the classroom there are more than one uh, children with speci uh, special needs. So, if we involve the parents in the classroom or in other activities of the school, then they will feel great. There are so many parents who are uh, especially mothers who are educated, but they are not working mothers. So, they can they can give some time 2 hours daily or weekly 2 days, so that they can come and teach or manage the classrooms. So, we should respect and involve the parents in the activities of the school. The parents should be informed with all the activities of the school, because they are the great resource for schools. In kinds, in resources, human resources they can provide, they can provide you good planning, they can provide many other 
things we need to run the schools and important to enthuse the empower parents to realize the criticality, criticality of the education for their words. So, they if they come regularly to the school and interact with the teachers and if the parents are involved in the day to day classroom or school activities, then they will be. Now, this is the participation, you see some pictures of the participation of the parents, parents are involved in the school activities, now the children's participation are there, how the children are participating in the group work and enjoying their group work. It is linkages with the community, because community linkage is very important. If there is not linkage with the community, it is all the plans, we cannot fulfill our plans and we cannot fulfill the Sarva Shiksha Abhijan. So, community linkage is very much needed. So, community if community and we can say that <coughs> community in the community, parents are there in the community, who are the PTA members, parent teacher association members, maybe the community around the organization. So, community may be involved, sometimes we find that the in many schools, primary schools, the building was need not up to the mark. Maybe there is problem of drinking water, maybe there is problem related with the sanitation, maybe there is problem related with the uh, some equipment and materials. So, if the principal can call the community, if there is regular meeting, then the principal can involve the community and fulfill the needs. Now, the planning process school wise, set up an inclusion team in each school, identify the people who will play a role in planning and implementing the inclusive school plan and set up a coordinating group. Step 2, identify the needs, what do the teachers or children already know and what do they need to learn. Learn about the school and the community's children, because if we do not need about the children and their background, we cannot teach. Create a vision, produce an inclusive school development plan implement your plan, evaluate your plan, implement and then evaluate whether we have attained the plan or not. A planning checklist, what are the planning checklist? The learning environment, what steps will I take today to establish an inviting learning environment in our classroom? What classroom management procedures do I need to introduce today? How can I introduce my lesson? Which procedures does the class need to review? Then flexible grouping, which outcomes can best be achieved individually, in pairs, in small groups or in the whole class? How will the pairings and groupings be determined? What transition will I use to ensure a smooth flow from one activity to the next? When the students are doing some activity, maybe in group or maybe in pairs, so whether these activities are going on smooth and from one activity to the next, how we can go about the lesson, preparing for learning, what written and oral forms will I use to provide the lesson, then which advanced organizer will I provide for students, 
what strategies will the students and I will activate. Then the vocabulary, which words and concepts are essential, how can I use my vocabulary, which strategies will be used to learn these words and concepts. Then acquisition and integration of information and processes and assessment, then instructions and on task behavior. And this is required that monitoring and adjustment is required. Without monitoring and adjusting, we are simply telling because there, if it is not monitored, then we cannot realize that we whether we have done any wrong, whether we are going in the right way. The principal is the key leader who can involve all the teachers and others in this, because he is or she is the key plays the key role in the leadership. And why change and collaboration are essential? Because we have talked already that we need change and but when there is some change, there is some inhibition. So, if you always do as you have always done, then you will always get what you have always got. So, we keep on changing and let the inclusive education be a success. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, having introduced the inclusive education, how the scenario has changed, can you uh, tell me in practical aspect, it helped a student to gain the things of what, how it is uh, going on? Uh, it is going on uh, very nicely. Now, uh, the children mm -hmm. in a classroom, previously what happened that the bright children they get the focus in the classroom. But nowadays, all types of children get focused and in group work or other activities, mm. actually generally we uh, tell that the teachers, they make the group with diverse kinds of children. In the same group, there are some bright students, some uh, mm. children with some problems. So, that all the children and there is peer learning, it okay. is going on very nicely. Okay. And now that continuous comprehensive evaluation has come, that formative evaluation that has been introduced by CBSC. So, it helps in the formative evaluation. So, that maybe one child is not so good in uh, language or not so good in maths, but the child may be good in other aspects okay. also. Okay, so, so well, well, friends, as uh, you come to know that uh, inclusive education is uh, very helpful and uh, it's proving very good for the students. So I uh, hope that uh, it will, in future, also be very fruitful. So with this word, we conclude the lecture, and I thank all of you for watching the lecture. And on behalf, I thank Dr. Sinha for giving such an insightful lecture on inclusive education. Thank you very much. Thank you.